Hello everybody, I'm Nick, and in this video I want to talk about what is holding Blazor back from being adopted even further, both from .NET developers, but also from developers from other ecosystems like React. And in this video, we have this Reddit post asking, hey, I'm genuinely curious, what is holding Blazor back from being adopted even further? I'm a React developer, genuinely interested in Blazor. Why? Like, are you a .NET developer as well? Like, if I'm a React developer, I already have sort of a very solid solution, tried and tested and in production for years from many, many companies around the world. Why are you really looking at Blazor? It also, I would argue, it's not quite the same to move from one to the other. So I question this on the high level, but also, you know, I keep hearing mixed things about Blazor and the ecosystem. Some love it, some hate it. Like, Blazor is fine. Let's just address that straight away. Blazor is fine, and actually in .NET 10, it's getting so much love that nothing really in ASP.NET Core is really getting, and .NET 10 is an LTS release, so that's really, really good for Blazor and its support. It went a bit down in .NET 9, but now more things are being added, and things are looking bright for Blazor developers. Another interesting thing about Blazor is, you know, people are saying, who is using Blazor and what is using it? Do you know what some of our top viewed courses on Dome Train, my learning platform, are Blazor content? by far they outweigh many of the other things that you would think they would be worth start two blazer in fact our three blazer courses are constantly in the top five to top ten of all our 92 courses which is something i did not expect when we first launched them we thought we we're going to target more of a niche but those who use it really want to learn how to use it and if you want to learn as well we're running a summer sale 30 percent off on everything so link in the description use the code summer 30 and claim it but that kind of shows me that there is a market and it seems to be more of the enterprise market there. Now, as someone with zero blazer experience, but plenty of React under my belt, I'm genuinely curious what are the main pain points and roadblocks you've encountered. Straight away, the first answer basically answers one of the biggest issues with Blazor, which is hot reload. That's across the entire of the .NET ecosystem. Hot reload, .NET Watch, it doesn't even come close to what some other language frameworks have. I wish it was better. And, you know, they are working on it, but it's not really where this technology shines and it should really be there and be really, really good. I hear Maui is even worse. So until that is sorted, it's not going to be that good. Now, this person says, other than that, you know, they don't really have many issues. WebAssembly has been trimmed, so it's usually okay to load. And then things like SSR and have Wasm download in the background, which is a great feature which does make Blazor a bit more confusing as well with all the different render modes. Like I keep losing track of what to use and where. Uh, and a bit of a trivia thing, like I just started working and in fact is live now building a portal for our business customers on Dome Train. And I had the choice to make that with Blazor, but I evaluated and I think it's just, it's just not there. I'm not comfortable to put this in productions for thousands of users to use. So I went with Razor Pages instead, not even MVC. Razor Pages are amazing. I think it's the most underrated product in terms of web stuff that Microsoft has. And I highly recommend it to everyone. You can do wonders with it. Now, other than that, performance is okay. And you can actually fine tune performance quite a bit with Blazor. Like Steve Sanderson has made many demos showing how you can make it so, so fast. But the most important thing is that realistically, it's horses for courses. If you have the option or ability to use a JS framework, I would probably recommend it, which is why I was, you know, why are you moving from React or considering from Blazor? If you can use that, you interface directly with what every browser is built on. Yes, you have WebAssembly, but let's be honest, it's not on the same level. And you have a bigger ecosystem and you have more tooling. And it is actually used in production on high scale scenarios by thousands of companies, tens of thousands of companies. And you have all the React Native stuff with the same knowledge. So, you know, hot reload here seems to be the biggest issue. No, I wouldn't say that's a big pain point, but yeah, it makes development so easy. I find myself making too many side projects. It is pretty easy to work with Blazor, but once you start doing more complex stuff and you don't just do side projects that really don't go anywhere, you'll quickly realize it's more tricky than it should be, in my opinion, especially with authentication authorization. That can be pretty uh, weird to work with. Uh, render modes, I did mention that already, but learning it is quite a pain in the ass. There's quite a lot of things and caveats you have to take into account. And it's great for like admin dashboards, which even for that, it just did not fit my use case. But if you have an intranet sort of dashboard, yeah, that is fine. But I wouldn't build the public facing side with it. Exactly my use case as well. That's how I feel. You know, I've been a large web application with it now and it works well. Yeah, okay. But start having thousands of users using it. And then we can talk with complex permissions of SSO and so on. It's not that simple and it is changing quite a bit like now it's been stable for the past few releases 
but for the past few years it has been changing constantly like we even had to wait to post our pleasure content further back if you go and watch my previous videos of laser it's nothing like what it is today. Another interesting comment is just not the tech you'd pick for day-to-day -day customer interactive internet-based UI. Either route you take to Blazor, WebAssembly, or SignalR has major ramifications to the customer experience and scale because everything you do on the server side of Blazor has to go through the internet and make a hop. And yes, you have SignalR, but if you have international products, you have to scale that out to every region that your customers are in. And it just complicates things quite a bit in my opinion, it's a very valid point. Now, it is heading to the right direction. So do I think that Blazor will forever be a niche sort of intranet or enterprise system? Maybe. I do think it's becoming better and better every year with every release, but it was either released too early, and to be honest, I do think it was ahead of its time, or people are just too set on this React or Vue or whatever else they're using in the JS world. And let's be honest, those people will not just learn C Sharp for the sake of using Blazor. Blazor is just more for .NET developers to use something instead of MVC or Razor Pages without losing them from the ecosystem to, let's say, go to React or Angular or any of the other frameworks. That's how I feel, but I do want to know from you. Leave a comment down below, let me know. What do you think about Blazor? And if you're using it and you actually have a public-facing, true-scale website, let me know. Don't link, because YouTube will remove the links, but let me know which product uses it, so maybe I can showcase it in the next video. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, keep coding.